Hey, welcome back to another installment of In the Woods and Workshop. So, what's going on here? This is actually a project that I've been working on over the last several months. And what it is, is this is an old, probably 100 plus year old barn that is on the, on the property of my friend Rick. And um, what he wanted was a table. See if I could use some of this wood to build a table. And uh, I wasn't too sure how it would work out considering just how thin these boards are and the fact that I was gonna have to plane things down. But I am pleasantly surprised with how this project turned out. This project is already done. I'm just out here uh, filming an introduction. Um, in fact, when I originally got this wood from Rick and take, had taken some of this wood off the barn here, it was last fall. <laughs> it has taken me that long to finally get to it. Pardon my appearance, I'm pretty dirty looking and that's just because I've been um, in the workshop, getting all dirty already today. And one other thing I wanted to mention was that this project was one of the primary reasons for one of my previous projects where I built my router sled. I needed a way to be able to surface these down despite the fact that I actually do have a planer. It just, the planer just doesn't work very well on big pieces of wood, hardwood like this. So I built myself a router sled to handle the job. And a majority of this project, that is what I use to build the table from surfacing the boards to edge joining the boards. So I hope you enjoy and we'll see you in the workshop. So the next step is to uh, joint the edge of these long boards and the problem is, is I don't have a good jointer. I do have a electric handheld planer, but when I tried to get a straight edge going all the way down this thing, these boards, I could not get a straight edge to save my life. Um, it looked like it was straight and then I would put two of these boards together and it would be it would be pretty flush and then as I got closer to the center there'd be more of a gap forming and I ended up trimming off a lot of these boards um, to try to get these to be flush right up to each other and absolute nightmare um, so what I've done here what I've come up with is a way to do this and I hope this actually works so I drew lines on my table here that are all exactly the same distance away from the rail and that way what I can do is I can put my board right up to that line and I can do this on both ends I'm not so I'll do it like that for now. It's really hard to see. Um, let me go up to this spot maybe. Yeah, because of shadows, it's hard to see on the, on the video here. 
And then what I do is with my router sled, I just have a scrap piece of wood here. This is actually a scrap from when I was building my router sled. And what I do is I determine the distance that I want. And that's just kind of a way to keep the router at an equal distance from the board. So I can't like move it in any further. So I just figure out exactly roughly where I want it. Um, I try to try to have it, I try to make it so that my surfacing router bit just kind of overlaps the wood just by a little bit so that I can equal it all out here. And that basically makes it so that, you know, I can pull, push it nice and tight to this. The nice thing about how I built my router sled is that this part here is actually a little bit lower than here. So with a scrap piece of wood that I just have clamped down on there, it just touches it nice and nice and solid. So I just have to use two little clamps there and I got plenty of space underneath to clamp them, as you can see. And so what I do is I will just screw, cause this is the part of the wood that's the sacrificial part that's just gonna get chopped off all the way down there. I do that on purpose so that I can screw, th screw things in and clamp things in there. Uh, so what I do is I just extend it to the uh, length of, length of the uh, board, put a screw there, and then I'll go down to the other side, do the exact same thing, right up against that line, and then I just adjust the depth two or three times on that and make, make a couple passes going along the edge. And it looks like it's straightening it up really nice, but I won't know for sure until I uh, put the boards together um, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. How I end up aligning this is, um, I actually push the router bit that I'm using right up against the edge of the wood. And I just pull this piece back just a little bit. That'll basically represent what I'm going to take off the edge. And then I tighten it down. And from there, I will just raise up my plunge router. And what I'll end up doing is, is uh, well, you can't see the router bit now because it's way up there, but I'm going to essentially just, just go right on top of the top corner of the wood there. And... Ride that down the edge and keep doing that. Come back, drop this down a little bit more, just a you know, front, just a hair down, and just keep doing that and keep going back. And then eventually I'll have it shaved down. Really, it only I, I do it in about maybe three passes. Um, so it, it's really quick. Really, the most amount of time here is just getting that lined up so that stops me from going beyond where I want to go and that's really what helps create the perfect line, perfect edge. So I got things adjusted and we'll roll with this. Just kind of pull it away a little bit so I'm not starting it right up on the wood. Here's my first pass on this particular piece of wood and as you can see down here it only took, takes a little bit off and then as you go down it keeps taking more and more and more and more and my guess is that is probably the result of my attempts to do this with a hand planer just not doing it right and my unsuccessful attempts at trying to get this line straight and I've noticed that with just about every board that I've done so far is that on one end it's a lot thicker than on the other end 
So the nice thing about this is it's going to help me get these boards the exact same width on each end of the board with a nice straight edge. Um, so apparently, I don't know, it's quite possible that maybe these boards, when they were originally milled, uh, they were milled so one end was longer than the other. Um, but I think that part of this problem was just me with the hand planer, just constantly trying to get these this line straight. And I ended up taking a lot more off one end than the other. <laughs> this is going to be particularly useful with this board, given the fact that it's not even close to being flat as it is. Um, when I was taking these boards off the barn, they were surprisingly in there very well with just long nails. And when I was trying to pry these things out, they are a little bit brittle with the kind of force that I had to apply to get these boards out and some of them broke. Like uh, this is a prime example. But uh, with this method here that I have to uh, edge joint these, I'm going to be able to get all that broken stuff off. Board's going to be a little bit thinner but it'll be a lot more usable. Okay, this is that same board. Nice and clean. There's a little bit of fuzzies where the, I didn't get quite down as low as I needed to. Um, I'll just sand that off and otherwise it's looking good. So I have the, the piece of wood flipped to the other side. So this was the side that I edged moments ago and now I'm doing this side. Basically the same process that I followed before. Well, exactly the same process. Going to get this this bit right up against the wood. Then I'm going to loosen these up and I'm just going to pull this back just a little bit just so that I can remove a little bit off this edge and do the same thing. I'll start up, raise up the router so I would take a little bit off the top, go all the way down and back, plunge it down a little bit more, do the same thing. And really, I'm basically just doing three passes. So I'm doing this much thickness with three passes and it seems to be working out pretty good. So I'll get this one finished up here. All right, we're good to go. Just three passes. Sacrificial piece right here on this side. That's gonna get cut off. So yeah, I mean, it's good to have a sacrificial piece on each end just for this purpose because being able to screw this down is so much easier than fiddling with any other method of holding this thing down it's not going to move um, and a lot of these boards are actually slightly warped just a little bit I got a couple boards are that are or I got one of the big boards that's like really warped but um, what I'm going to ultimately be doing is I'm going to joint these boards together. I'm going to be using my biscuit joiner and I'm going to be putting in biscuits spaced out evenly going across all the different boards. Just surfacing these boards down and doing the edge joining is the most difficult aspect of this. Um, once I get this tabletop all jointed together, the rest is going to be a cinch. It's just been me over here trying to figure out the best way to do this with uh, with what tools that I have. So. so because I can't go all the way to the end of the board or else the router's going <laughs> to fall off there, that's about as far as I can go so I can't actually trim that all off. So what I end up doing at this point is um, I just use one of these saws and I just trim that, that piece off again. This is on the sacrificial side of the board. So that this entire area right here is going to get cut off ultimately. So this doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Although I try to get it as good, as straight as I can because I'm going to use this to this side when I flip it over to line it up with the lines here. Although because it's not going to be absolutely perfect, what I do is I line it up as best as I can and then I go to the next one because I have a line marked on each one of these and just make sure it's lined up pretty good. And uh, yeah, so I'll cut this off, 
on both sides flip it over and edge the side so here are two boards that I jointed with this uh, method that I just came up with and this is absolutely 10,000 times better <laughs> than uh, what I had when I attempted to use the hand planer um, this board's pretty warped but I'm going to use biscuit joints on these boards when I glue them together and get it all nice and flat so I'm just going to continue with the other boards and I'll finally be able to cut these ends off and I'll be able to join them together and really this is what has been my big hole up on building this tabletop was just trying my darndest to get a nice straight edge on these boards and I believe this finally solves my problem okay so here's the tabletop um, prior to uh, me actually joining the boards together and you can see that there's you know quite a bit of warp especially in this big one here this one's really warped I don't know if you can see down on the other side but it's really sticking up however I'll be able to fix that very easily I'm preparing to uh, put these boards together using biscuits and my biscuit joiner and these are the biscuits so basically what I do is um, I just kind of lay these biscuits out just so I have an idea of how many I'm gonna use what I do is I these are two separate boards here if you can tell I just draw with a pencil I just draw a line going between from one board to the other and I just do that everywhere I'm gonna put a biscuit that way I have it perfectly aligned and I know exactly where to line up my uh, biscuit joiner you can see those that's essentially where I would line it up with the um, line that I'm going to draw and this is a pretty handy tool it's super fast barely even feels like you're cutting into the wood I just just gonna make sure that I have it lined up I don't know if you can see that red line on the jointer just just need to make sure that I have it lined up so that it's I'm gonna cut the uh, the slot fairly close to the top and the nice thing about this is I make the adjustment on there so the cuts always going to be in the same place so that when I actually attach these boards glue them together with the biscuits and, and such they will be exactly spot on from the top now I had mentioned earlier that these boards are all kind of different widths but by doing it with by joining these with the biscuits the top is what really matters I just want the top to be nice and flat um, I can fiddle with the bottom part to, to make it look pretty smooth later on and cutting these uh, slots for the biscuits super quick like I said you just basically set it on there and pull the trigger and push in takes just a split second and it gives me a nice slot for the biscuit and so I'm basically just going to go down the board this was the first board I only had to do it on one side this is actually going to be reversed to attach to that one so I got to do several slots on both sides of the rest of the boards until I get down to the last one and then I just do the slot on this side but again I have I have my marks on here so with the pencil that way I know exactly where to cut the slot so they line up perfectly pretty straightforward pretty easy I have everything glued up and clamped together it's looking pretty good actually so these C clamps and these bar clamps um, were given to me by my grandpa Holt uh, a couple years before he he passed away and uh, every time I do a project and I use these clamps I always think of him so we'll, we'll let this dry I just wanted to point out the the joints on here are are really good 
Um, it's almost impossible to tell uh, that this piece right here is made up of three different boards. Uh, you'll see like some natural cracks, but that's not actually the seam. In fact, I have to look really hard to determine where the boards were joined. Uh, right there. But it's practically invisible when you look at the, uh, take into consideration the cracks. It's pretty obvious when you go into a very different colored piece of wood. Um, it is kind of odd to me that uh, a couple of these pieces are so much lighter than the other pieces and they don't seem to be nearly as impacted by insects as the darker pieces so part of me is wondering if these lighter pieces are not even chestnut i mean they almost look like a pine to me or a spruce um but it's clear that these boards were on that barn for a long, 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 long time. And I just surfaced just a little bit off of these boards. Now, if they were untreated pine, it's hard to believe that they would look that good after all these years. But, yeah, the difference in color just has me wondering. Either way, I think it looks really cool. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, I'm gonna get, I'm getting to the point now where I am going to put a build my base underneath, and I'm gonna do that with tulip poplar, um, just because this is so thin. Uh, I want to give it some. I mean, you can see it how easy it is to move, and it bends pretty easily. So I just want to make it really nice and solid. It doesn't. It's not going to be a real thick piece or pieces that I'm gonna put under here, um, and then I'm going to square these edges up on either side and um, I'm still not entirely sure what I want to do here. Um, I'll figure it out. Like I said in other project videos, I kind of just do things by the seat of my pants. I don't have a huge plan up front a lot of times. I, I kind of have an overall vision of what I want to accomplish, but then I just kind of go about doing it as I go and see what works out. The next thing I need to do is square up the table and I need to straighten out the ends. Um, when I glued them together, there was all, you know, I didn't have it perfectly straight and the boards weren't perfectly, or the boards weren't exactly the same length. And I had a little bit of movement, obviously. Um, so what I do is I, um, we use uh, one of these real long, squares adjustable square and I put it up flush against the the board and I line it up so that I can make a mark where this needs to be cut which I've already done so I have already marked it up and as you can see there's Definitely quite a bit of variance as far as uh, what I need to cut off uh, in a straight line that will square this up. I've done this on both sides, so I did, did it over there already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my router sled to basically edge these two sides of the tabletop as well. So this is the first time I've ever done this. <laughs> So bear with me, I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. So the next thing I'll do is I'll, I put these, just, these cutoffs on here on each side just so that I can actually keep this straight edge higher than this piece. I don't want this sitting right on here because I'm going to need to probably move this slightly and I don't want this to move with it. So um, you can pretty much use anything you want just to, just to keep it above it, but you want to keep it pretty close to it so that you can examine the line and everything. So having drawn the, the line there, 
I just want to make sure that that line is squared up with the router sled. So you can just lay this thing down pretty much wherever. I would put it in front of the line. And then you can use the router sled itself, just kind of push it along here and it will make contact with it. And because it's making contact with it on both sides, it is perfectly squaring this up with the router sled. So from there, what I do is I look at the line that I have drawn down there and I just want the tabletop itself to line up perfectly with the straight edge here. So now that this is nice and square, I can examine the line that I have drawn along the straight edge to see if the tabletop needs to be, you know, adjusted slightly so that that line I drew matches up with this. Now actually it looks like I have it on there pretty square already. Take an, another look at it here. I don't know, it's probably gonna be really difficult to see in this phone, but you can kind of see the line. Um, you know, I get right up and look, examine it, and I can see it a lot better um, than you can in the camera. So I think down there it looks like it might be I might need to make just one slight adjustment. And again, I am making this up as I go. I've never done this before. So I'm hoping that this turns out pretty good. And I'm just going to kind of move it a little bit. Now that looks pretty good. I'll eyeball it again. I mean, that looks pretty straight. So the reason why I want to get this super straight, even though this is just a, a rustic table, obviously, is because what I'm going to do is I am going to use this, a piece like this. Uh, I'm going to cut this into strips and I am going to use the strips to trim around the edges of the table. So I really want these strips to be flush up against the ends. They already will be on the sides because I've already edge jointed them. So I'm edge joining the sides so that when I glue these up, the strips from that up, it will be absolutely flush up here and you're not gonna see any gaps. Um, that, that way it'll look really nice. If I were to just cut this with a, a circular saw or whatever, I'm not gonna get a perfect, perfectly straight cut. And you know, I could have probably made all of this a lot easier if I had one of those, um, it's kind of like a panel saw. It's like, tra I guess it's a track saw where you can make perfectly straight cuts, but those are like you know, 600 bucks. And it's like, it just seems like every tool that I need costs 500 plus dollars and just trying to make do with what I got. <laughs> I'm not really making much money on this stuff. So what I'll do at this point is, since I'm only doing this edge here, uh, I'll just clamp, I'll clamp the uh, tabletop down to my table so it won't move. And the next thing that I will do is, what I may end up doing is just using a piece of wood uh, it doesn't really matter if the wood isn't even perfectly square itself because what I need to do is just put something here and on the other side that won't allow it to move that direction any further than I want it to. That way I can push this thing as hard as I want. That way it's only going to go to a certain point and I can go back and forth and essentially edge joint uh, both ends. All of this may sound a lot more complex than it really is. Um, it's just, you know, trying to explain, explain it. So, yeah, if I didn't, if I didn't have something to, you know, stop, stop this, then it's the same, same sort of thing or the exact same situation that I had when I was jointing the edges. I want this thing to have a hard stop where it cannot go in this, it cannot go in this direction any further. And then I'm free. I have the table clamp down. I have it so this can't move that direction any further. And I can do whatever the heck I want 
and I'm going to end up getting a perfectly straight edge. So that's the ultimate goal. Because I've because I've aligned this this board or the tabletop to this straight edge, once I clamp this down, or I mean, I can just take it apart now. I mean, I don't even have to have it clamped down because it's heavy enough. I can move this off, and I can move this all over the place because I now know that this line is perfectly squared with this. At this point, I'm just going to determine where I want this thing to stop. So I'm just going to um, clamp something down, probably some boards or something, so that this can only go, you know, just in a little bit beyond the, that line. And then I can trim all that off. I can make several passes and, you know, push my my router down with each pass until I'm down to the bottom and it should be perfectly squared. Okay, so I have this clamp down and the way I did it, I just used two of these clamps, these long clamps, and uh, just clamped it to the uh, edge of the table and I have a board going over top and then a shorter board underneath so that this board is applying pressure to the smaller one underneath and it's pushing that down and I got that right over one of these supports here. That's nice and tight. This thing is not going to move anywhere. So the next step is, is um, with the router, I just, and this is, again, this is such a little area here to <laughs> work with. You probably cannot see, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the router over top so that the um, the router bed actually will cut up to this point and it doesn't even have to cut all the way up to that point uh, because the line I got a little bit to work with so if I get it close enough to that point good enough so what I'll do is I'll adjust the router so like I said the bits right over that point are pretty darn close to it and that is where I know I want to put my whatever I'm going to use to stop this from being able to move any further that direction. So what I could use is um, like a, another board going across here and I just make sure that this board is right up against on both sides and then I just need to clamp this thing down and then I won't be able to move the router slot any further. And then I can do my routing here. And no matter what I do, I can't go beyond that line. And it's perfectly straight, so that'll cut all this extra stuff off and make that perfectly square. Well, that's the plan, at least. So I'll do another pass here. I've already adjusted the router. Well, actually, I did my first pass, and then I... I moved this up, so I just need to actually plunge further down. Okay. Get this thing started up. typically don't do what I just did as far as going back and forth, but um, trying to hold this camera <laughs> and do that at the same time, uh, the router kept wanting to go back. But as you can see, I, I could push the router pretty much as hard as I want to that way, and it wasn't going to go any further because of that support rail that I have there. So yeah, just uh, another pass, or two passes, and I'll have this, uh, this edge totally square. 
So I'll uh, do that off camera. All right, so I flipped the tabletop to the other side. So what I had edged prior to this is now down there. So this is the other side. It may seem like all the stuff that I'm doing is just a lot of work. When I did this off camera, this literally only took me maybe two minutes to set this back up. Basically, just clamping it down there so it wouldn't move. And the other thing that did help me was before I flipped it over, and you're not going to be able to see, <laughs> but I just penciled some lines right here on each one of these so that when I flipped it over, I just aligned this to those lines. That way I already had it squared just like it was before, um, which allowed me to really do this quickly. So I'll, here's the edge. And you can see my line that I drew and I'll go ahead and edge. Now I'm preparing to attach the end piece to the ends of the table top. Um, that's just to make it look more uniform as well as to uh, increase stability of the tabletop and it just looks really nice. So the way I'm going to do this is um, given the fact that um, I don't know if you'll be able to see but uh, probably can't really see very well but like I said this uh, these boards are so thin that they just easily move around and if I just try to attach this um, and glue it up, it's going to be really difficult to get these totally aligned with the top. Now I could just deal with the misalignment and sand it down, but I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to use biscuits on this as well. As you can see, I have a biscuit sitting there. I'm going to do the same concept. Um, going to hold that up there and I'm going to just draw lines with pencils like so and this is thin but um, the biscuit there is enough room for the biscuit on there without it going through I don't have a lot of extra room but I think that's just that'll help add to the stability of this if I were to just glue this on without any biscuits you know over time you know people pushing on this or whatever it might just break off so it'll it'll give this a stronger bind and it will help make this the top of this table perfectly aligned with this piece. So I'll do that on both ends and use my bar clamps uh, to clamp it all together. Then after that's done, I'll do the sides. Okay, so I've cut the uh, slots for the biscuits. And in case you're wondering why I made these extra long, is because when I put the side rails on I want to make sure I have plenty plenty of space um, so that I can make them make the corner perfectly flush with between the two and I'll just use my little saw to cut off the excess. Um, the reason why I did it that way is because I am notorious for cutting things a little bit too short and if I had cut these and then found that once I put the piece on this side it was wider than this is long, then I'd have to do extra work to match it up. This way I can get it matched up and then just cut off what I don't need. So yeah, those biscuits will slide into those slots on the bottom. Nice glue up. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side first before I actually glue things up. Okay, I have everything glued up and clamped down. Um, yeah, what this one thing that this project has taught me is that I definitely need more clamps. I need more bar clamps. I need more, potentially more of these. Um, <laughs> this is not how I wanted it to clamp, but I've discovered that if I clamped right here, then it just caused this thing to kind of bow out instead. Um, so that's not, I'm not able to get that as tight as I was hoping, which is very frustrating. Um, it seems like with all the tools and stuff that I have, I still don't have enough. 
though I must say that I haven't done a whole lot of projects where I've needed to do clamping like this, um, but um, I'm going to have to invest in some more clamps if I want to do more projects like this to avoid frustration. So yeah, um, after these dry, then I'll do the sides. All right, so here are the uh, table bases that uh, my friend want, wanted the uh, tabletop for. And uh, it's a perfect fit. This should look really nice. The last step is I just mounted, uh, I had a couple scrap pieces of wood here. I figured, hey, I might as well put them in there for support. And um, we'll be able to wrap this thing up. So here we are. Uh, this is the finished product. And um, it's been delivered to my friend Rick. And uh, yeah, so this is what it, what it looks like. Um, it's actually not finished. We haven't decided if, uh, if he would like it finished. I told him that um, I actually really like the, uh, the look of the natural wood unfinished. And because it's actually under a covered porch here, even though it's outside, it probably doesn't need to be finished. Um, but uh, I, I may actually do some experimenting with some, some finishes on some scrap pieces just to see how it colors the wood. Otherwise, they may just use a something to cover the table, you know, when they're using it, uh, just to prevent stains and, and such. So I got the, I got everything trimmed up nice, everything sanded down to uh, 400 grit. It's nice and smooth. And one of the features of the table is underneath, which um, I left that completely original as far as I didn't actually surface down any of that wood. It's what it looked like when it was on the barn. So that gives it more, more of a historical uh, feel to it. So they can look underneath, underneath the table and see what it look, what the wood looked like when it was actually on the barn. So yeah, I'm actually really happy with the way this turned out, um, considering the, uh, the tools that I had to build this thing. Thanks for uh, following me along on this journey. I hope it wasn't too boring to watch the process, but I actually learned quite a bit doing this myself. And um, I look forward to doing more projects like this in the future. Thanks again for watching and God bless.